Hi everyone, it's Jerry I'm on chess.com and I just got paired up playing a 3-2 game. So let's gun for a Slav here. Uh, support the uh, d5 pawn. Let's go with this a6 line. Could have also considered bishop out. Okay, so I don't have to worry about queen b3. Eh, let's go to a more aggressive post. I think this is a good spot. Uh, okay, just back up. I thought maybe g4. Mm, let's play e6. Maybe I'll go to c6, something with c5. And knight c6, scratch that. Let's immediately guard e5. Okay. I'm happy so far with my position. I could take and play knight here. Huh. Mm, I could even take and then play bishop check. Hmm. Now I'm going to take and play knight e4 immediately. With h3, it's difficult to kick this knight now, because I have knight g3. He needs to be challenged, but he can't be challenged right away. Probably castle. And I'm going to play this first, provoke maybe some weakness on a3, and then at some point maybe they'll have to tend to this pressure. Pretty even position. They're playing with the space advantage. Slight. Don't know how uh, big a deal it'll be. I think I could take, and then actually take again. On uh, c4. Hmm. Uh, let's slow down just a hair here. Simplifying quite a bit. Uh, let's take here. Okay, so I have a healthy majority on the queen side. Also playing with the better bishop. Hmm. King or rook? I have some time to consider here. I think my king will do well to sit on c7. Hmm. I want one pair of rooks off the board. I want this to be a bit, a bit more uh, technical. Let's see. Let's go with the king playing here. And then play the rook here. Okay. Bishop d4. Hmm. A bit happy to see that move. Exchange one rook and then contest the open file. Yeah, I think that this is... Uh, I think that this is good. Uh, take with the king or bishop. Not sure it matters too much. Um, hmm. Take with the king. I want to keep control over this square so there's no clamping down type of thing. So how to win this? Definitely the better side here. Um, okay, I think a start is b5. Yeah, let's get b5 in. And take like this. Okay. Just get my king up now. Function on the light squares. Hmm. Alright, let's continue to approach. Uh, I think that this is a key move, actually. Uh, I want to work my king around to a4. I think this is an important move. No, they're not allowing me, or they're not preventing me from getting my king up here. Hmm. I have no fear of them creating a pass pawn over here. I just play g6, and I never capture when this pawn is on f5. So let's sneak around. Yeah. Just king up. Let me double check. <laughs> uh yeah. I still don't have I don't have any fear. They're just letting me improve my king position without much of an issue. Uh let's just go here. All pawns on light squares. Maybe this oh this was actually better. Okay, I could still get that in. Cause now I have pressure on this pawn. 
they have to defend it with the bishop. Hmm. Okay, definitely take with the f pawn. We don't want this guy getting past. So now they have to defend here. And what's the cleanest win? Push here? Yeah, probably. Get him rolling. And king here, and then I could push a couple more times. This is uh this should be pretty clean from here. Hmm. I think I okay, now it's definitely a win, because a king here. They gave up a king position. Now he can't even be stopped. Yeah, they resigned. Um I think the issue, just before I even look at it with the computer, was uh knight to e five. Hmm. Allowing uh Allowing the capture, you know, play, playing with this uh, doubled e pawns, and it got it got way too uh, uh, simplified. Let me just uh, go into it uh, real quick here. So this position right around here, and I think that this was too quick. This um space advantage that white has I don't know how uh, I don't know if that you could really put it to great use if there are more pieces on the board and it uh, might be difficult to work around but I'm, I only have two minor pieces I'll, I'll be able to find adequate adequate squares for my minor pieces uh, I think that, that that move was maybe just too fast knight into e5 or maybe it shouldn't be played at all Maybe maybe the other idea is, uh, well I don't know, uh, knight knight to c3 and then look for an e4 break, or maybe even at this point if you say the h3 move after h3 bishop back maybe go straight in for g4, and then try and look for this type of imbalance knight for bishop exchange. Had this been played, I would follow up with knight on f to d7. Uh, challenging the knight like this runs into h4, and it's uh, very awkward now. Although, although not not quite the case here, because I have this as a possibility to get out of uh, the bishop. Uh, the bishop quite possibly being pinned, or uh, trapped, I should say, after h5. So with the knight still on b1, I don't know how how great an idea this is actually. In in a different situation. If I'm to just insert one more move for each side, let's just say after bishop here, the knight played, I don't know, let's say here, and I'm just going to make a, a dummy move, just a passing move to illustrate. If the knight is on this square, already developed, this idea of h3, g4, bishop back, knight e5, I think it's best, well, I have some concern on d5 here, but if I am to challenge the knight, like this with the queen knight then there is this move h4 and now it's quite awkward I, I never want to play h6 because I lose the light square bishop and I'm having to take away from the center and there's serious light square weaknesses uh, if I'm able to take like this it's a much different story taking towards the center rook is brought to life and g6 and e6 are not gaps they're not holes um, so this this would be an issue now actually for me with h4 takes here and my knight is hit and when he moves here comes h5 and my bishop's short on squares he's going to be trapped so anyhow um it was still an idea to in the game after h3 to play i think g4 and then at least follow up here and track down my light square bishop and then play this one out, but yeah, I kind of I had it a, a little bit easy with. Um, I I felt very comfortable, I should say, as soon as I was able to deploy my light square bishop. This was maybe a bit too soon to play b3. Normally, uh, from my experience, b3 will be played only when uh, some pressure is exerted on c4. Um, when b3 was played. One of my first thoughts, I don't know that I was able to express it. We were playing uh, pretty quick uh, right out of the right out of the opening there. But when b3 is played, 
You know, I, I don't have any concern, of course, about the queen coming out to this b3 square, putting pressure on b7, so I can much more freely deploy my light square bishop without this uh, mm, fairly common reply uh, to, to then target the weak point that I leave behind when I do deploy the bishop. So b3 rules out any queenside influence uh, the white queen might have in my position. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know what else there is to say, really, before I uh, skim this over with the computer. Pretty uh, natural developing moves. Just got too simplified. Um, yeah. Oh, maybe maybe this is an adjustment as well. Definitely need to keep the queens on the board, I think. Playing here allows the the exact uh, move sequence we had in the game, where if we're going into this ending, uh, I could only see it as black being better. Uh, a three, perfectly healthy group of three versus two on the queen side. And um, it's material balance, but it feels like I'm just up a pawn here, because these guys cannot successfully create a pass pawn on their own. Uh, so maybe better, didn't mean to go all the way back, but maybe better here as a last, uh, as a little bit of an adjustment. Maybe instead of knight d2, it's better to challenge the knight like this. That way on a capture here, the queens are still going to be on the board. And then maybe even queen g4. I don't know, queen g4 with f4, f5, looking for some attack, but if it becomes much more technical, uh, uh, an end game without uh, the queens on the board, this advantage here on the queen side is uh, uh, more easily realized, let's just say. But uh, anyhow, let's uh, quickly skim it over with uh, Stockfish and see uh, what more we can take away from this one. Okay, let's see what we could take away from this one. Have a Slav on board with this A6 move. This is eventually aimed at trying to resolve this tension in the center between the C and D pawns. Uh, with this uh, B B5 move, but uh, again, uh, as mentioned, more it's more common to see B3 only after White has actually followed through with the B5 move. Only once questioned uh, on C4 will we normally see B3. So just a little move order uh, detail. B3, of course, is not bad, but. Uh, this allows me to get my light square bishop out freely prior to e6, so I really don't have any uh, opening issues, any any problems to really solve. So, like bishop to e2, this is where I was pointing out maybe going for this. Is this in fact an idea? Sure. Yeah, I could play e6 here. Yeah, it's an, it's an idea to still go in this direction. Minor piece imbalance. Just another position. White uh, maintains a solid structure. White has the bishop pair. Yep, it's just another way to play it. Bishop e2 in the game. Bishop b4 check. Hmm. Okay. Went knight there right away. It does not like this. Instead, uh, castles. Okay. Hmm. Okay, suppose castles, and I don't know that I would want to play here, because I want to be able to take this knight when it plays to e5. I want to be able to take it with my knight. You know, this isn't a possibility anymore, because I would end up in a fork. So I think if white is to castle instead of knight to e5 in the game, uh, I would play bishop to e7. Excuse me. After if they were to castle here, I would probably follow up with bishop e7. They say knight c3 castle. Some pretty natural moves. Rook to c1, and now it's calling out for bishop to b4. Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess I could now that the if the knight is playing to c3, I could even think about bishop to d6. You know, there isn't. Uh, this knight e5 idea anymore, although there might still be this knight e5 idea, because on bishop takes bishop, there's knight takes, and then the bishop is there to see the knight indirectly. 
But yeah, it's a pretty slow position. Nobody's going to get uh, killed uh, right away. It's just finding useful squares for pieces, developing still, of course. Uh, yeah, so they went with 95. That's where it shifts a little bit. It likes inserting a check. Nothing wrong with capturing either. Knight takes, pawn takes, and now bishop check. Huh. I went with knight to e4. What's the story with here? I thought that just bishop blocks. Takes, knight takes. Mm, okay. If we do have a dark square bishop exchange, they have some concern over f4 and on... No, concern over e5. They have to play f4, and then there's maybe even a check. Mm, it likes castles, and then maybe the idea is f6. Calls for queen e7, but I think f6 is a move as well. It is. Okay. Uh, as it played out in this one, after the knights were exchanged, yeah, it likes knight to c3. Yeah, knight to d2. This is uh, becoming too simplified with the queens coming off. Does it like king takes? It does like king takes. Probably the same evaluation with rook takes. Yeah. <laughs> it's maybe being... Uh, bit too, I don't know, I'm trying to be a bit too perfect on this move here, but I had some time. I figured that this was the best residence for my king on c7. Uh, I definitely didn't want to castle king side because this is where the action is going to occur on the queen side. So I took with the king. How could I have uh, done better in this ending? Mm. Yeah, I was already mentioning right around this point that I thought I just wanted to get one pair of rooks off the board at least. As it turned out, they were quickly both exchanged. And yeah, it's that much more easily realized this advantage here on the queen side. Three, a healthy three versus two versus an, an unhealthy four versus, or excuse me, an unhealthy five for white versus a four uh, on the king side. Yeah, it calls for a bishop to c3. Hmm. Oh, okay, bishop c3 with maybe this as the idea. To to have ideas of bishop to a5. Hmm. Just had uh, the rooks contesting the open file. One pair of rooks is off. Another is off. It's only showing as uh, about a half pawn advantage. Hmm. King c7. I just played b5 right away. It's getting the kings rolling. I guess this is still holdable for white. How could they have held this better? It's starting to grow now. Sometimes it's it's not really a fan of that move. Hmm. It's quite natural to 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 want to play to position your pawns on light squares so that they don't become targets. I don't really see what is wrong with e4. Hmm. I don't know if I will be able to figure that one out. It makes a lot of sense. I mean, it ta it takes away this square. It's it's it works well. Uh, it coordinates well with the the bishop. Want your pawns on light. Bishop will be around to guard the dark. Okay, e4. Still not uh, anything serious. And right around this point, I thought the bishop needed to play here. Um, just to stop my king from getting over on this side of the board real quick. Oh, but that's not working. <laughs> because I have bishop c5. If the if it's just a king and pawn ending, this is completely winning. And, well, if you avoid the bishop exchange, I'm winning the pawn on f. So, you probably have to do this before they even think about this move. So, I was wrong to think that this was a good idea. It would not be because of my reply bishop c5. So they played f4. I worked my king around. And yeah. I had no fear of these. The biggest thing here when it comes time to assess the the uh, the queen the king side of the board is you just never take on f5. You never you never capture here uh, in this position to undouble the pawns. You just leave them sitting. You just maintain this type of structure.
and wait for white to capture you. And there's no way for white to uh, create a pass pawn on the king side. Uh, something did change here. I maybe went just a little bit too fast right around this point. King c2 is necessary. Although maybe it's still already you know, giving it some time here. It is uh, close to a pawn and a half advantage, so it's looking pretty serious. May already be losing. Hmm. Yeah, it may it may already be losing here. Bishop to d4. <laughs> it just it, it just feels like if I could get my king over here like this, that yeah, good you know good luck trying to defend this. It's quite tricky. Uh, just a, a really good king position. And you know, we're just playing really on one side of the board. And I uh, have this extra pawn. Yeah, I don't think that there was anything wrong with how I played it. Uh, G6. Yeah, it's still holding an advantage. I think that this is just winning, no matter what. Oh. And I just kept pushing my pawn, and as soon as the king gave ground... It just paved the way for this move, but I guess it was still lost no matter what. Um, what does white do? Uh, they have to watch over this pawn? Or even if they gave it up, let's just say, I don't know, the bishop goes here. I could just move my king and then push away. Yeah, I mean, I'm already threatening to push. I don't have to, uh, let's say, defend my bishop. I could just start pushing like this in queen. So the winning idea from this point would be instead of king here, king c2, and my opponent resigned at this point, but if they didn't play king here, and let's say bishop, I don't know, here, king a2, and on king c4, okay, king b1, king b1, and then king to c2. Yeah, this is just a, an enormous position right here for the king. Yeah, there's not really anything that white could do. So, bishop here, king here. If king c2 could take the pawn, and I'm just pushing through next, they end up having to give their bishop. Tough to suggest anything, really. Here, yeah, I'm just pushing through. Okay, yeah, the the main points here, uh, just a, a different option, of course, for white around this point to hunt down the light square bishop. This is another way to play it, going right in for the bishop pair. And knight to e5, as it turns out, was just a bit too soon. More development was needed first. Castles, knight c3, rook c1, only maybe a little bit later, considering this knight to e5 move. And really the last point was how exactly to challenge the knight on e4. The queens need to be maintained on this in this position, otherwise it's you know, a very difficult road ahead for uh, Team White, because as mentioned, uh, it's a healthy 3 versus 2 majority on the queen side. I'm basically playing up a pawn in this position. So, uh, Anyhow, uh, as usual, feel free to leave any feedback in the comments section below to this video, and as usual, I hope you got something out of it. That's all for now. Take care. Bye.